Good evening and welcome to Lesson 1-9 on Multiplying and Dividing Integers. Our two main objectives for tonight are you'll be able to multiply integers using different methods such as repeated addition, patterns, and rules. And you'll also be able to divide integers using the rules. All right, so why don't we go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to look at is multiplying integers. And we're going to use this table that I have here. Now, you'll notice for this part, there's really three different columns. There's one on multiplication, there's one on uh, repeated addition, and we have a third column that says sum. It's those ones in purple. And I did that three times negative four for you first. We're just doing a little bit of investigation here. So this is really saying I have three groups of negative four. One group, two groups, three groups. Now if I add those together, and again, they all have the same sign, so they're just going to get more negative. Negative four plus negative four is negative eight, plus negative four is negative 12. So here, three times negative four is equal to negative 12. We can do the same thing here with the next one. We have six groups of negative one. So negative one plus 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 negative one. So we added negative one six times. So negative one plus negative one is negative two plus negative one is negative three and so on. We'll get negative six. So six times negative one is negative six. We can do the same thing with this third one. Four times negative nine, or four groups of negative nine. Negative nine plus negative nine plus negative nine plus negative nine. That's the repeated addition of it. And if you add those all together, again, they all have the same sign you're adding them, you'll end up with negative 36. And if you were to do the last one, and please do this with me as I'm going along. Don't just wait for me to write it down. You can do it too. We have three times negative seven, or three groups of negative seven. So negative seven plus negative seven plus negative seven. So if I look at that repeated addition, let's see, negative seven plus negative seven is negative 14, plus negative seven is negative 21. So three times negative seven is negative 21. Now, number two and three, I have a little bit of information that I want you to do first. What do you notice about the signs of the sum? So this column here. All right, so what do you notice about all those numbers? I want you to write that down for number two. And then number three, what conjecture or conclusion can you draw about making the product of a positive number times a negative number. Go ahead and write those down now. All right, for number two, you should have noticed that all the sums or the product here, they were all negative. So three, what conjecture can you make about multiplying or the product of a positive number, which I'm underlining now, whoops, except for that one, in blue, and a negative number? What do you notice about the prod products? Well, hopefully you'd notice that a positive times a negative equals a negative product. So whenever you multiply a positive by a negative, you end up with a negative. All right. Now, last, well, the last page we looked at a repeated addition and what ended up happening. Now, on this example, we're going to look at a number line and how you can use that. So a diver is descending from the surface of the water at a rate of five feet per second. Write an expression with repeated addition to show how far the diver is from the surface of the water after four seconds. And then use this number line to show repeated addition. So again, I know that th this diver is going to start at zero. Because when they're at the top of the water, they're at zero feet right now. And I know that he's descending, meaning he's going lower. So I'm going to be dealing with negative numbers here. All right. So 
This is per second, basically. So he can go down at five feet per second. So after one second, he's five feet below. So it should be negative five. All right. And then at two seconds, he went another five feet and is at negative ten. For the third second, he decreased by five again. It's getting lower. He should be at negative 15. And finally, four seconds, he should be at negative 20 feet. And that would be your answer. So here, basically, I just went with what they gave us. They gave us the rate, and then they showed the rest of it. Now, I could do this with repeated addition because, well, he was at negative 5, then he added another negative 5, then he added another negative 5, and so on. And when you do that, you end up at negative 20 feet. So that's one way to do this. You can use a number line and go along that line. All right, you can also use patterns. And in lesson, I believe, 1-7, we started looking at patterns in inductive reasoning. So use a pattern to find each product. Now, you can start with you know. And we know how to multiply positive numbers. 2 times 7 is 14. 1 times 7 is 7. 0 times 7, well, anything times 0 is 0. So if we take a look at this, notice what happens. What do you see with the pattern? We go from 14, 7, then 0. Well, to go from 14 to 7, you could divide by 2. But that doesn't work for 7 divided by 2. So we know that's not the rule. Instead, well, another way you can do it is 14 minus 7. And here, 7 minus 7 gives you 0. So I'm pretty sure we found the pattern. Now we continue it. Well, if you're at 0 and you subtract 7, you're at negative 7. Or again, with that investigation we did on the first page, any negative times a positive is a negative answer. All right, and then you do it again, you subtract 7 more, and you're at negative 14. So your answer here would be negative 14. All right. Then we have this one. We have B, negative 2 times negative 5. Well, again, we can go ahead and start with what we know. And on this one, well, 2 times negative 5. And again, any time a positive is taken times a negative, you're going to get a negative answer. So 2 times 5 is 10. However, we have 2 times negative 5, so it's a negative 10. Then we have 1 times negative 5, so negative 5. Anything times 0 is 0. So again, you can stop here and take a look what's happening each time. If I'm at negative 10 and I go to negative 5, I'm actually getting closer to 0. I'm getting closer. I'm adding. So here, I'm adding 5. Then to get from negative 5 to 0, well, I add 5. Well, and that pattern continues. So negative 1 times a negative 5, if I add 5 to it, 0 plus 5 is 5. I do it one more time. Negative 2 times negative 5 is 10. All right. So you could use number lines, you could use patterns, or you could use the rules. And honestly, this is how I prefer to do it because it's really a lot easier. All right. So the product of two integers with the same sign is positive. So if I have a positive number times a positive, your answer is going to be positive. All right. Now, if you have a negative times a negative, your answer is also going to be positive. So if the signs are the same, you get a positive answer. All right. The second one here, the second part, I just put a red star by. The product of two integers with different signs, so the signs are not the same, you're going to get a negative answer. So positive times a negative is negative. Or a negative times a positive is negative. So anytime you have one positive number and one negative number, your answer will be negative. All right, and of course, as I've said before, anything times zero is going to be zero. So negative three times zero is zero. Two times zero is zero. All right, so then I have a few problems around here that we could solve. And in fact, I have four. I have 
them kind of around this yellow box. What I'd like you to do is in a second pause a video and try to solve these using the rules. And again, make sure you look. Are they the same sign? That'll tell you if your answer is positive or negative. All right, go ahead and pause me now. All right. Now, if I were to look at this first one, 3 times negative 5. Well, I see a positive 3 times a negative 5. So that's different sign. So I know my answer is going to be negative. And then I look. Well, 3 times 5 is 15. So I have three groups of negative 5. I'm going to get negative 15. Then down at the bottom, I have 0 times negative 15. Well, that fits under this third bullet point. Anything times 0 is 0. So 0 times negative 15 is 0. All right. Then, um, going right, we have 4 times 3. Well, you've seen that before, I'm sure. But again, they have the same sign. They're both positive, so that would be a positive 12. And then we have that top one, top right-hand corner, negative 1 times negative 7. Well, 1 times 7 is 7. I know that. Now I look at the signs. Both were negative. Well, they have the same sign, so it's a positive 7. All right. So moving on to the next page. Now we have a bit more difficult of an example. It says multiply 6 times negative 2 times negative 3. And again, whenever you have parentheses right next to it, it still means multiply. You can put in those little dots or multiplication signs if it makes you um, happy or if it makes it easier for you, I should say. So what we end up doing is you start looking at order of operations. If there are any parentheses or anything like that, you have to make sure you solve it in the right order. But because it's all multiplying, you're just going to start from left to right. So we're going to go ahead and do this. 6 times negative 2. Well, one's positive, one is negative. Going back to that rule, you will have a negative answer. So 6 times 2 is 12, but 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. All right, and then I'm going to rewrite the rest of it. So I copy down that times negative 3. And from here, I have negative 12 times negative 3. Taking a look, they have the same signs. If they have the same sign, you have a positive answer. 12 times 3 is 36. We have a positive 36. All right, now we're going to take a look at dividing integers. And which is, what is really nice, excuse me, about this is that it's the same rules. That the quotient, so when you divide something, that means that answer, if they, are, if they have the same sign, excuse me, is positive. So if there's two positive numbers or two negative numbers that you're dividing, you're going to get a positive quotient. All right, the next one that I'm going to do in green here the quotient of two integers with different signs is negative. Again, that's just like the multiplying one. If you have a positive and a negative number, you're going to get a negative answer here when you multiply or divide. And then here in red is a, an important reminder. Division by zero is undefined. So I want to stress this a little bit more. You can do something like this, zero divided by two. If you have zero, group, zero of something and you try to divide it into two groups, well, each group will have zero. All right? But you cannot do two divided by zero. You can't do it that way because, well, if you have two things and you don't have anything you're giving up, it doesn't work out. It's undefined. All right? So whenever you divide by a zero, it's undefined. All right, and again, I have four problems around this yellow box, and we're going to do the same thing. I want you to pause this video in just a second and then solve those, and when you're all done, come back and check your answers. Go ahead and pause me now. All right, so we're going to start at the top left-hand corner again. We have negative 36 divided by negative 9. Well, I know 36 divided by 9 is 4, but I have to decide, is this positive or a negative 4? So this is when I go back to the rules. I have a negative 36 and a negative 9. Well, they have the same sign, so it's a positive. So my answer is positive 4. Then going down, we have negative 12 divided by 0. That was in the red bullet. And I take a look. Oh, 0. We're dividing by 0, so it's undefined. Then we have the one next to it, 0 divided by negative 2. Well, that is just 0. 
And again, your answer of zero is neither positive or negative. So it doesn't matter that that two is negative. Zero is just zero. And then finally, we have at the top right-hand corner, 24 divided by negative 4. Well, I know 24 divided by 4 is 6, but I have to decide, is it positive or negative? So I take a look at the numbers. 24 is positive, and negative 4, well, that's negative. So they're different signs, so my answer is negative. I have a negative 6. All right, so here we're going to do a short little activity of match up the problem with its answer. And again, you can use those rules. You can use repeated addition, number lines, whatever you choose. Me, I like to use the rules. So we'll do the first one together. Negative 1 times negative 4. Well, I know negative uh, 1 times 4 is 4, and they have the same sign, so it would be a positive 4. So that goes there. All right, then I think I'm going to let you do the rest of them. And from there, check your answer. So go ahead and pause me now. All right, so let's check those answers. 2 times 6 is 12. One's positive, one is negative, so we get a negative 12. 0 times negative 11, well, anything times 0 is 0. 12 divided by 3, well, that would be 4. So that goes up there. Uh, let's see, 9 divided by negative 3. Well, 9 divided by 3 is 3. One's positive, one's negative, so our answer would be a negative 3. Then negative 4 divided by negative 4. Well, 4 divided by 4 is 1, but now we have to decide, is it negative or positive? Go back to the rules. If they have the same sign, it's positive. Both of these are negative, so we have a positive 1 here. All right, so that is how it should have matched up. All right, and last example, and then we are all done. Use a table to find the average of the differences in the values of a Canadian dollar and a U.S. dollar for 2003 through 2005. So we're going to use this table here. All right, and we're going to use a column that says difference because they want the differences. So if we take a look, we don't worry about 2001 or 2002 because they say, I want to know for 2003 through 2004 and 2005. Now, they bring in an extra point here, and that is average. All right? When we average something out, remember that's when you take all the data and divide by how many pieces there are. So here we divide by three since we're taking these three. So we're going to go ahead and do this. We're adding them all together negative 29 plus negative 23 plus negative 17. Now, they're all negative, so I know the answer is just going to get more negative. And I get a negative 69. All right. Now, I found how, what that equals at the top. Now I need to divide it by how many data pieces there are. We have the three years, so we divide it by three. And let's see. We go ahead and do that. And we get 23. But again, we have to look. Is that a positive or negative 23? So if we take a look, 1 is negative. We have a negative 69 and a positive 3. The signs are different. So our answer is a negative 23 cents. We should have a label since it's a word problem. All right. So that would be what we'd have for number 4. All right, and then we have a quick check, and I would like you to do this very quickly using whatever method you choose, and then when you're done, well, we're done for the night. So go ahead and pause me and do that. All right, on this one, I'm not actually going to um, talk through it. I'm just going to write the answers. So number one, you should have 21. Number two, you should have four. Number three should be a negative 24. Number four should be a negative 21. And number five should be a negative 12. All right, and again, if you got those wrong, just go ahead and look through it, go back through the rules, and see if you can find the error. If you can't, come to school tomorrow morning, and then I can talk you through it. Have a great night. Bye-bye.